Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you how to build an automator quick action that allows you to create a text response based on a set of inputs. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 600 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So you probably already know how to create a text replacement where you type a few characters and then it replaces it with a whole paragraph of text. This is handy for responding to somebody with a standard message in email or text. But what if you need to actually have some different information every time you respond. Like you want to respond including that person's name or other bits of data. Well you can use Automator to build a system where it prompts you for things like the person's name and then gives you text in return that includes that bit of information inside the text. So let's start off here in Automator and I'm going to create a quick action. That way we'll be able to access it in different apps and later assign a keyboard shortcut to it. Now the first thing we want to do is set up how it works. So what we want is Automator to not have any input. So we should set it to no input but we're not going to do that right away. We're going to leave it at automatic for now. Then we're going to check the box saying Output Replace has Selected Text. Later on we'll change this to no input. If we do it now it's going to uncheck this box. So the first thing we want to have happen is it will ask us for a piece of text. Automator has a handy action for that. We'll search for Ask and there's Ask for Text. We'll say OK ask us for a name. We'll require an answer and that's all. If I run this you can see it asks for a name and we can type it in and that's it. Now we want to store that in a variable because we're not done yet. We're going to ask for more pieces of information. So let's set variable. So set value of variable. Let's create a new variable name and we'll call this name. That's just the person's name. Great. So that will ask for the text and we'll set this variable to it. Now let's ask for some more text. What we're going to do with this is have kind of an email response. We'll, we'll address the person by name and tell them that we'll get back to them in a certain number of days. What number of days? Well let's make that something that we can change. So sometimes it's three days, sometimes it's seven days, whatever you want. So we'll ask for text but this time we're going to ask for days. We're requiring an answer here. Now we don't want the result of the last action passed into this. We want to break that. So I'm going to control click here and ignore input. So these are separate things. It will ask for the name, set it in a variable, then start fresh, ask for the number of days, and then set this as a variable and we'll do new variable name and we'll call that days. Notice here I can see the variables at the bottom. If you don't you probably have the set to log. Click here to set it to variables and now you can see those variables. Now we'd like the next section to actually prompt us with some choices. So not something we type in but choices like okay if you don't hear from us then call us or email us or try again or something else. We want to have a choice. We're going to use JavaScript. We're going to run a piece of JavaScript. Again I'm going to break the input here by control clicking on that saying ignore input. Now we have JavaScript and JavaScript is both going to set up a list of things that can be the result of this prompt and do the prompt. So here's the script. We start off with the default function declaration at the top. We don't need to change that. And then we have these two lines which are pretty standard at the top of any JavaScript. First we ask for the current app. You know what app is running. It's probably going to be mail for doing an email response thing here. And then we do include standard editions which will allow us to actually include some of the commands we need. Now we get to work. First we have a variable declaration here. We declare choices to be an array. An array has got square brackets around it and items separated by commas. So we have three items here. They are strings in quotes, pieces of text in other words. Continue to wait. Try contacting us again and try calling. You can have four items here, five, two, however many you want. Just change this array. Now we're going to have another variable selection and that's going to be the result of a choose from list call which will throw up a prompt and allow us to choose from a list. The list will be from the array choices and then we include the parameters with a prompt and the prompt is otherwise question mark. And then multiple selections allowed false. Only allow one selection. Then we'll return the result. Let's set a variable to this. And we'll call this variable otherwise. Now we can look at the results here to test this out. So I can click on Results 
and we get this area here where we're going to see the results. So what we want to test is does this JavaScript actually work and after it works does it actually set the value of this variable because the result here is going to be the value of this variable. So let's hit Run to test it. First it's going to ask for the name. Then the number of days. And here's the prompt for otherwise. So we'll select this one here, hit OK, and we can see here in the result that, that is indeed what the variable is set to. So now the next thing we want to do is build the text based on those three variables. So we want to use another script for that. But first we want to pass in all three variables into that script. How to do that in Automator with JavaScript is pretty simple. You use get value of variable like that and we'll break the input here so ignore input like that. And this will get us the first variable. Then we do it again but now we're going to do the second variable. Actually we want to put these in order. So the first variable should be name, second should be days, we'll do it one more time, and the third one should be otherwise. So we have a series here. It starts off fresh, get the value of this variable, pass it into here, get value of the second variable, pass it into here, get value of the third variable, and now we're going to pass that into a script. So all three of those values are passed in as input as an array. So you can see here the JavaScript function asks for input. Input will now be an array with those three values in it. So here's the script for this. It's a pretty simple one. You can see here we keep the first line. This is going to bring us the variables in as input. Then we set up a new string, response equals, and we set it to some text. But notice I'm not starting a new command here. I didn't put a semicolon. Instead I just write on the next line. I do a plus which will append text together and I bring input 0, the first item in the array, as the next part. Then I continue plus and some text here. And then input 1, the second item, more text. Input 2, the third item, and then a little more text, just a period there at the end. Then I finally put a semicolon to end this statement. So this could all be done on one line, but it looks a little neater if I break it up on several lines like this. JavaScript still considers this to be just one command. Then I return this response. Let's look at the results for this when we run this. So I'll hit Run. I'll do a name. I'll do a number of days. I'll just use the down arrow there to easily select one of these and hit Return. And now you can see the response here includes the name, includes the days, and includes the bit of text here at the end. It puts it all together. This is perfect. So now because I've set at the very top here Output Replace a Selected Text I should get this as output from the script. Let's save this now. I'm going to do File Save. And we can call this anything we want. I'm going to call it Support Response and hit Save. Now one last thing I want to do is I want to change Workflow Receives Current and instead of automatic text I'm going to say no input. Now notice since I've added all this stuff here Automator recognizes that I am outputting something so it's going to allow me to keep this checkbox Output Replaces Selected Text even though I'm receiving no input. Because we're never going to select text and have it replace something with this. We're just going to have to insert it where the cursor is. So let me save it again and now let's go and switch to Mail. So now here I am in Mail and I'm going to type something into the body but I want to use my script instead. I can go to Mail and then Services and I should see it here at the top under Text. If you don't see it here at the top it could be because you forgot to have it select No Input because there is no input here. I haven't selected anything. So if you have it selected to Automatic or Receives Text Input it's going to say Oh I can't put this here because nothing is selected. Now I can select this here. It's going to give me my prompts and the first time you do this it may actually ask you for permission to run the script in Mail. And now we do those. We select one of these. I hit OK and you can see it inserts the text right where I want it. Now all I need to do is set a keyboard shortcut. I can go to System Preferences to do that. I can also access that by going to Mail, Services, and see at the bottom where it says Services Preferences. If I do that it jumps right to where I need to go. And I can look for this script here. So it's going to be all the way here under Text and I'll see Support Response and I can add a shortcut. So I can do like Control Option Command R and you can see that there is a shortcut. So now when I'm in here I notice that if I go to Mail, Services it will actually show Control Option Command R as a support response. I'll try that here. Hit that and you can see it's going to prompt me for the things. 
and I could easily insert that there. You can create several different versions of these or if you're good with coding you can use more prompts to actually customize this further. So you can have a whole tree of inputs that ask for different pieces of information, create the string in JavaScript and return it here as text to make responding to emails or filling in a form on a web page very easy. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.